Can big things come in small packages? We're about to find out. In this video, I'm taking a look at this super small smart home multi-sensor from Apollo Automations. This little device can track a person moving around a room and provide brightness, temperature, humidity, pressure, and CO2 readings. It can also light up and make noise. What is this thing and what's it for? We're about to find out. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this. This little gadget is called the MSR2 millimeter wave multi-sensor. It's made specifically for smart home automations using Home Assistant. Apollo Automation sent me this device to test out, but they did not pay me to say anything, nor did they review this video before publishing. The MSR2 measures just one and nine sixteenths of an inch wide, 15 sixteenths of an inch tall, and nine sixteenths of an inch deep. It's about the height of a US quarter dollar coin. The power brick I'm using it with is much larger. Despite its small size, the MSR2 packs a punch. Its primary sensor is millimeter wave radar. This can track a single person in a room, whether they are moving or still. It also has a lux sensor measuring the ambient brightness and UV. Additionally, it has a sensor for providing temperature, humidity, and pressure. Due to the heat generated by the onboard ESP32, you'll need to provide offsets to land on the correct indoor temperature and humidity. This can easily be done on the device page in Home Assistant, no coding required. You can also get an optional CO2 sensor, and it can act as a Bluetooth device tracker to know who specifically just walked into a room based on their connected Bluetooth device. Or it could track a pet if the pet has a Bluetooth beacon on its collar. One reason you may want to do that is to exclude the pet's movement from triggering an automation, but that's not all. The MSR2 also has a built-in RGB pixel, which you can use to set different colors related to your home automations. For example, the light could turn red if it's nighttime and the garage door was left open. The built-in buzzer is perhaps the most curious. It can beep when a door or window opens or even play a song. The device must be plugged in to operate and it's powered by USB-C. If you just purchase the MSR2, you get the fully assembled board inside a 3D printed case. However, Apollo offers several accessories depending on how you'd like to place it in your home. You can swap out the back of the case for an alternate back-facing USB-C port. The default case has USB-C coming out one side, so this accessory lets you run a cable to it from the back. Or you could get a sensor stand, which you can mount to any surface at an angle of your choosing using the included tape or screw holes. But there's even more. For my favorite, you can get an outlet mount, which is an L-shaped USB-C to USB-C connector that plugs into a wall power brick. I prefer this not only for the wire-free look, but also the ease of setup and sensor stability. With millimeter wave radar, it's important that it's very still since it can detect subtle movements. Setting up the sensor and adding it to Home Assistant is super quick and easy. Plug the sensor into a power brick, then connect the device's Wi-Fi network from your phone or computer. A pop-up screen allows you to select your home's Wi-Fi network for the sensor to connect with. After entering your Wi-Fi password, open up Home Assistant and go to the Devices and Services page. The sensor should be auto-discovered by ESP Home in Home Assistant. Click Configure and then Submit and the device is added to the ESP Home integration and ready for use in your home automations. All this can be done in about a minute. Taking a look at the device page, it has a crazy number of entities. The millimeter wave radar has entities for tracking the distance of the target and even if the target is moving toward or away from the sensor. For the most accurate CO2 readings, you'll want to calibrate its sensor first. To do that, just take it outside, plug it in for three to five minutes, 
and then press the Calibrate SCD40 button at the top of the entities on the device page in Home Assistant. Then you can bring it back inside and it's ready to go. Let's talk about how I'm using this or how you might want to use it. I think Millimeter Wave is the killer feature of any smart home because presence detection unlocks so many possibilities. I'm using the Millimeter Wave capability to automatically turn off the lights in my office when no one is in the room. Turning on the lights can use a condition to only do so when the Lux sensor detects a low level of brightness. You could also turn on a ceiling fan when the temperature sensor or CO2 readings cross certain thresholds, or turn on an exhaust fan based on the level of humidity in a bathroom. I take out the trash every Thursday night, so I have the built-in RGB pixel turn green as a reminder on trash nights. There are nearly endless possibilities when you have all these sensors to play with. All right, so how does this sensor stack up? Well, pretty big, in fact. It's the fastest and easiest smart home device I think I've ever set up in Home Assistant. The case is included with the purchase and it's strong and you can choose from a range of mounting accessories to get just the right placement for your environment. Indicator lights can be really useful in home automation, so I wish more smart home sensors included a built-in RGB pixel like this does. The millimeter wave radar has been dead on reliable for me so far and I haven't had to do much tweaking to the default configuration. I like how it has separate entities for still and moving targets. When I'm working at my desk chair, the moving target is clear, but the still target is detected, which is just crazy how it can do that. Finally, the guys at Apollo Automation are super active on their Discord channel where you can get quick help on any troubleshooting. They also have lots of helpful documentation on their website for setup, calibration, dashboard cards, and more. So how could this thing be improved? Well, smart lighting is the most common home automation in my house. I like to use PIR motion sensor for turning on lights and millimeter wave for turning them off. This is because millimeter wave is really sensitive and I don't want a light turning on because a curtain moved. I know the MSR2 is already packed full of sensors, but I'd be interested in a version that includes PIR depending on the cost. The other thing I'd like to see is an easier way to fine tune the millimeter wave radar. To do so, you need to turn on radar engineering mode and then monitor something called the gate energy across seven different gates. While Apollo Automation has documentation on this, I find the process a bit cumbersome, especially compared to the more straightforward tuning of something like the Everything Presence One. Finally, depending on how you try to mount this, the tiny form factor may present a challenge. Because it weighs practically nothing, when connected to a USB-C cable, it's hard to get the sensor to sit still at the angle you want since the weight of the cable just sort of yanks it around. It really needs to be locked down either using the outlet mount or a sensor stand, but neither of those accessories is included in the base price. For $34.99, with the case included, the MSR2 millimeter wave multi-sensor is a great value. It packs a ton of sensors at that price, plus a helpful RGB pixel and a quirky buzzer. The standout feature though is the millimeter wave sensor, which if you don't have one, can take your smart home automations to the next level. It will cost you an extra $20 though, if you want that CO2 sensor. And if you want any of the mounting accessories that I mentioned, those will cost you another $5 to $13, depending on your selection. Let me know in the comments how you're using Millimeter Wave for presence detection and how you think this sensor stacks up. If you're interested in how the MSR2 stacks up against the Everything Presence One, you'll want to check out the video here. Hit the like button if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. What does the blue light mean? Oh, it's just a reminder that it's time for me to drink more water. The orange light? Uh, time for me to stand up because I've been sitting too long. And red? Oh, that light means it's time for us to pick up the kids from school. This is getting hard to remember. And what about that pink light? Oh, that one's just for fun.